Hello everyone, welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number four, we'll be adding gravity and jumping to our player. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to move the player left and right, but we didn't make the player able to move up and down. In order to do that, we'll have to look at simple physics. Now physics is the study of the physical world and how it works, but in games it's quite simplified. Whatever we can get away with removing will make our life easier in terms of the math involved. For our platformer we'll be using the simplest physics that still works. Now in the player loop is where we've been controlling the player, and it's also where we'll be adding the gravity. So on this final line here, I'm going to press enter and then backspace to exit that if statement. And on line number nine down here, I'm going to start moving the player downwards. This is not going to be inside an if statement, it's just always going to happen. I'm going to say self.y minus equals two. And you'll notice as soon as you hit stop and play, the player starts falling down. This is the simplest gravity we can have and it works just right for our game. However, you notice that he falls straight through the ground. For that we'll have to look at what we call collisions. So for collisions I'll bring you over to Sketchpad for a moment here. I'll explain how collisions work. A collision happens when two objects touch. You'll notice I have a red border around this green block and a blue border around this character. When their borders interact, when they touch, that's when we get a collision. So right now the two objects are colliding at this point. If they're not touching, they are not colliding and thus there is no collision for us to use. What we're looking for is when our player falls down to the ground and he touches the top of the ground, he should stop moving. In order to check for a collision, we use a function called getCollision. And since we're checking for something, we also need to use an if statement. So head back to your player loop here. And I'm going to leave another empty space just to keep my code organized. On line 11, I'm going to start my collision check here. I start off with the word if, and then the condition is going to be that collision that I'm looking for. So I say get underscore collision. Now get collision is a slightly more complicated function than the other ones we've been using, like key is pressed or print. Get collision requires two pieces of information. Can you guess what those are? They are the two objects that we want to check for the collision. Now the first one is the player. We want to check if the player is colliding with something. Now since we're inside the player still, we use the word self. The second piece of information is the floor class. We want to check if we're colliding with any kind of floor. So we say comma, and then inside two apostrophes, we write floor with a capital F. This is because we're looking for any kind of floor object. This could be that floor one or floor two object that we created in the game. Either one will work as the floor class. And just like any other if statement, we end it with a colon here. So what do we want to happen when this condition is true, when we are colliding with the floor? Well, we want to stop falling. So on the next line, we're going to just counter our gravity. 
if our gravity is reducing our y value by 2 every frame, we're just going to instead increase our y value by 2 every frame. And this line will directly counter this one and stop the player from falling. You can see it in action as soon as we hit play. And look at that. As soon as I touched the floor, I stopped falling and I can still move left and right. If I walk off the platform, I start falling again. Now, what about being able to jump? That's a little bit more complicated than what we've been doing with the other controls. We only want to make the player jump for a limited amount of time before he starts falling down again. And we don't want to control when he starts falling down again. We only want to build a control when he starts the jump. For that, we need to keep track of two pieces of information. The first piece of information is going to be whether we're on the ground or not. Because we don't want to build a jump when we're already in the air. That doesn't make sense according to physics. The second one is going to be a timer to see how long we increase the player's y value to make them go up. So in the player start, we're going to create two variables. Now I'm going to type these out and I'll explain what they are afterwards. So the first variable is going to be called on ground, but I have to put the word self before that. So it's self dot on ground. And notice that I've used a lowercase o, but a capital G. This is what we call camel case. It just makes it easier for humans to read. The computer doesn't care whether we use capital letters or not, as long as we keep using the same spelling. So self.onGround is going to equal false at the start of the game. That's because when we start the game, the player is in the air, and that means they're not on the ground. Now this variable is what we call a boolean. It can only be true or false. The next variable is going to be a timer. I'm going to call it self.jumptimer because it's going to control how long we jump. And it is going to equal zero. So the jump timer variable is what we call an integer which is just a whole number. There's no decimals. As long as there's no decimals in your number, you call it an integer. So as a review, I'll bring you over to Sketchpad here. When it comes to variables, there's a lot of different types. A variable is just some kind of piece of information that we want to keep track of. Now a Boolean can either be true or false. An integer is just a number without decimals. That number can be a negative number as well, as long as there's no decimals. Now these pieces of information don't actually do anything on their own. That's all they are, information. But we can change that information and use it while the game is playing. For instance, when, we, when do we want to be on the ground? Well, when we're colliding with the floor. Let's head over to the player loop again and add in another line to our collision check here. So when we collide with the ground, we not only want to counter gravity, but we want to say self dot on ground equals true. Now remember, we want to spell on ground exactly how we had it in the start with that capital G there. Next, we want to actually be able to jump. First, we need to check if we press the space button. So here I'm going to use the key was pressed function. That way when we press the space bar once, we jump once. Remember inside the apostrophe here, we want to add the space and a colon at the end. But remember, I needed a second condition here. I wanted to check if I was on the ground before I was able to jump. 
In order to do that, I can add another if statement. This is called a nested if statement. So first I'm checking if I press the space key, and then I check if self.onGround is equal to true. Now notice that I have even more space now. So if this if statement runs if we press the space key, and this if statement runs if self.onGround is equal to true. Any code I write here is only going to happen if both those conditions are true. In here, I'm going to be setting that jump timer. I'm going to set it equal to 30. I'm also going to make sure that I'm no longer on the ground. Once I start jumping, I'm in the air. So self.onGround now equals false. So we've made use of our onGround variable. It's being used in this if statement. But we haven't made use of our jump timer yet. All we're doing is setting it equal to 30. The computer doesn't do anything with it after that. We need to code in the rest of the logic. The first thing I want to do is go to the next line and go all the way back to the wall because I don't want to be inside those if statements anymore. The next step is to be always counting down that timer. That's what a timer is good for. It counts down or it counts up. So I'm going to say self.jumpTimer minus equals 1. So now we're doing a little bit more with the timer. If we press the space key and we're on the ground, we set the timer to 30, and then the loop starts counting it back down and down and down. So from 30 all the way to zero and beyond. We want to make use of the timer when it's above zero. So for that brief moment when we press the jump key and the timer is above zero, we're going to be moving the player up to make them jump. So we need to check if the jump timer is above zero. We say if self.jumpTimer is greater than zero. And if so, what we want to do is increase the player's y by a significant amount. And just like that, you're able to jump off the ground and you start falling down. Now notice we still have that hello world message being printed in the game loop. If you have something similar, head over to the game loop. And if you want to keep the code, what you can do is put a hashtag in front of it. This is what we call a comment. The computer is going to ignore these two lines of code. If you feel like you don't need it anymore, you can delete it. And just like that, we have a player that is able to jump. Now you might feel that they are not jumping high enough. That's easy to fix. Head back to the player loop and you can change two things. You can either make the timer longer to make the jump last longer or you can increase the speed of the jump. Let me show you the difference between those two. If I make the timer last 60 frames instead of just 30, the jump lasts longer even though it's the same speed. If I instead increase the speed of the jump, it'll be a fast burst of speed. Find numbers that work best for you. And that brings us to the end of lesson four. We looked at collisions. We looked at variables having an on ground or Boolean and a jump timer, an integer. 
and we looked at nested if statements, how to look for two conditions before doing an effect. Finally, we looked at greater than symbols. You can use many different comparisons like that, less than, greater than, equal to. We'll look at more in the future. The next lesson is going to be a challenge lesson. I'll see you there.